some word for you that's timely concerning what's happening today. Now, let me just tell you people, God, it is such an honor that God will speak to us concerning the seasons and the times. It's not a coincidence where we're at. It's not a surprise to the Lord. The things that we see on the TVs set, and I could just tell you that God has a great and mighty plan. And at the end of it, there'll be complete victory. Amen. Amen. The, the word of God gives us a, a hope and a promise that the, 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 there's a working, a plan that's being worked out, that at the end, there'll be no more death, no more war, there'll be no more pain, there'll be no more sorrow, and there'll be no more tears. Amen. And that the only thing will be full, the only thing that we'll, we'll have is we, this world will be full of the glory of God. Amen. Amen. So no matter how deep and how terrible things might look on TV, recognize that God has a plan. And recognize that you are part of the plan of God. Amen. And so today I want to speak to you about how, uh, how to be at peace and how to remove the fear out of your life. Amen. And how to walk through this season. Amen. Uh, there are things that are happening that are, you really can't explain. But I will say this, God has a way of speaking to everyone. You know, this world, like this week, we have a, there's a movie that's coming out on the rapture. And you know what? The past month, there have been movies and there's been shows and people have been talking about the end and salvation and the rapture and Jesus coming. Praise the Lord. Take hope in that Jesus is coming. Amen. Soon and very soon we are going to see the king. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah, give God praise. Amen. Hallelujah. And don't be disappointed if you think, oh, well, what? You know, I had all these dreams about what my life would come. Trust me, when you see the glory that we're getting ready to go in, you're going to say, man, this is awesome. This is amazing. You're, you ain't going to be worried about those things that you thought you were going to do in the flesh because the things that God, I mean, it's just going to be glorious. Amen? And so understand that God is working. This, this is a unique season, a unique time. But I will say this. All those that are prophets are prophesying and are speaking, and there's a unity in the spirit. And the prophecies that they're speaking is that it's going to probably get worse before it gets better. That there's a lot of things that are happening that are crossing borders. And that even we being here in the United States, we're going to see a lot of it too. We've already seen it happening in the news. People thinking that they're, they're, they're living out their faith, but they're, they're, they're living in a lie. And so they'll take, they'll, they will spill blood in the name of their faith, but they're rec they, they don't realize what they're really doing is serving a devil. Amen. And so we have to have the right mindset and we have to have the right heart so that even when we see things happening in the, in the flesh, what's happening in the spirit is greater than what's happening in the flesh. Just because we might see things, we shall not be moved because our God is not moved. Amen. And so I want to prepare you for what's happening, how to walk through it and how you and your family will live without fear. Amen. You don't, have to, you don't have to be in fear. Even if the whole world is in fear, you don't have to be in fear. Amen. The word of God says in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and sound mind. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and sound mind. Terrorists want to give you fear. It is the work of the devil that's to bring fear into your life. The spirit of fear is, is an attack of the enemy to destroy you. But God has not given you a spirit of fear. And so if God has not given you a spirit of fear, don't take it. Resist the devil and he shall flee. You tell that spirit of fear, get out, and he'll leave. You begin to claim the victory that you have in Jesus Christ and resist it in the name of the Lord. The word of God says those who cry out, those that cry out to the name of the Lord shall be saved. So as soon as you lift up the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I command fear to leave right now. 
You might see something on TV and, and your mind will start thinking and fear starts to rise up and you next thing you know, you notice your body is starting to react to the information that you just received. Listen, just begin to take, take authority over that. I come against that spirit of fear right now. Fear, I command you to leave right now in Jesus' name. I will not be controlled by fear. God has not given us a spirit of fear. But what has he given us? Power, love, and a sound mind. Peace. Amen? Peace is a gift from the Lord. Amen? So begin to receive it. No, I have the peace of God in Jesus' name. Say, I have the peace of God. Again, I have the peace of God. In Jesus' name, I have peace. Amen? You know, maybe, maybe you've been having nightmares. You know, begin to speak over your dreams. In the name of Jesus, I don't receive that anymore. I command those dreams to leave in Jesus' name. I will not be walking in fear. I will not be living in fear in Jesus' name. Now, if you're watching every horror film and, and looking at everything that talks about fear, you're going to have the fruits, amen, of the seeds that you receive. But if you will shut that door and say, no, I'm not going to, no, in the name of Jesus, I command it to go. Some of you might have things in your own room that are bringing fear. And you don't even know what it is. Begin to rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Commanded to go in the name of Jesus. Get out in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Am I, am I, am I at the right church today? Are we, are we spirit-filled people of God? Amen. And so there is a battle that happens in the spirit world that's trying to get you to react in the flesh. The world will say, go get more guns. How many guns do you need to feel safe? Apparently, there ain't an amount of guns that you need to feel safe because those that have guns, they want more. I mean, how many hands do you have? You know, how many bombs do you need to feel safe? How many walls do you need to put up to feel safe? How many soldiers need to be sent to the war field to be safe? Those things do not bring safety. Only God can give you peace. Only Jesus has the gift of peace. Jesus is the Prince of Peace, amen? And so trying to find peace outside of God is impossible. That's the same thing with money. How much money do you need to feel safe? I could tell you people that are millionaires and they still say it's not enough. Amen. Only Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Amen. So I want to take you into a place of no fear. I want to show you the protection, the divine protection of the Lord. And if you will receive it, if you will believe it, Fear can no longer come into your life because you have the answer even before the attack. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. I want you, let's go ahead, open up your Bibles. Oh, that was a tired one. Are we at Faith Places God Church? Yeah. Hallelujah. Open up your Bibles. Yeah. Oh, that's better. I, let's go to Psalms, Psalms, Psalms. We're going to start in Psalms 91. And we are going to read a chapter full of the promises of divine protection. Amen? Hallelujah. Now, God will give you promises. God will speak to you about his intentions and what he's done for you. But you have to claim it. You have to receive it. You have to take hold of it by faith. You have to claim it in the name of Jesus that it's yours. Amen? Say, it's mine in Jesus' name. You have to claim it. You have to accept it. This is the way it is, and it's mine. I take it, and I'm not letting it go. Letting go. Amen? If you want some, you go get it yourself. Amen? But I'm taking mine. Amen? I claim it in the name of Jesus. It's mine. So when you hear the word of God, you've got to receive it. Amen? Don't, try, don't wait for someone to keep on telling you and finally you be convinced. Why don't you just be convinced because it's the wisdom of God. Amen? Hallelujah. In Psalms 91, there is a conversation that's taking place, and we have, we have four different characters that are speaking to us. Four different characters that are speaking to us. And so I'm going to lay out the word of God to you, and when you see something that you like, receive it in Jesus' name. Amen? Say, I receive it. Hallelujah. Let's begin in verse 1. Psalms 91, here the man of God is talking to us. Here is the, uh, a man of God who has experienced the goodness of God. He's speaking to us. In verse 1 it says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the, Almi of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him I will trust. What is our confession? 
My confession is, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him I will trust. That is our confession. The word of God says, whoever dwells in the secret place, the secret place is that personal relationship that you have with God. That secret place is that intimacy and that worship that, that you have with the Lord. Whenever you begin to practice the presence of God and begin to recognize that Jesus Christ is with you wherever you go, that he'll never leave you nor forsake you. When you wake up in the morning and you begin to say, welcome Holy Spirit, we inv I invite you in. When you begin to speak to him as his presence is right there with you all the time, you're, you're living in the secret place because it's intimacy. It's between you and him. And so I wake up and I begin to recognize, oh, Father, thank you for this awesome day. Lord, I love you. These, this is just a natural outpouring of my heart because I recognize that God is with me. I don't need to go to church and sing a bunch of worship songs to worship the Lord. I am always worshiping God. God is not for Sunday. God is 24 hours, seven days a week. When I rise and when I go down, God is in my sleep. God is when, when I'm working, wherever I am, God is with me. And I am with him. Amen. So in that secret place, that intimate intimacy that you have with the Lord you can make that confession he is my refuge and my fortress my God in him I will trust some people will trust in the gun some people will trust in the money some people will trust in the walls but we put our trust in the Lord amen my God in him I will trust amen and it's so easy to trust him when you recognize his presence as soon as you invite his presence he comes he puts his hand of love upon your life. It's so easy to trust him. When you're going through the darkest valley of your life, it's so easy to trust the Lord when his presence is with you. Amen. When you hide in his secret place. Amen. So the man of God says, says that that is available for you if you will just dwell in the secret place of the most high God. Amen. Now, beginning in verse 3, we hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. How many want to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit speaking to you? Verse 3, it says, Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the, pest, the perilous pestilence. Right here, that one scripture right there. It's speaking to us saying, you're going to be delivered from terrorism and you're going to be de delivered from Ebola. Amen. The snare of the fowler. Those that are trying to put traps to try to harm you and to destroy you, you shall be delivered. Amen. Surely. Everybody says, surely. That's not, that's not a might. That's not a maybe. That is, it's going to be, it's going to happen. Amen. Surely. Amen. He, he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence, Ebola, any sickness, any disease, anything that is attacking anybody in this world, it might be for them, but it's not for you. You are abiding in the secret place of the Most High God. You are a child of God. Remember, your name is written in heaven. Heaven knows you, amen? Hallelujah. Verse four, he shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. It is so awesome to be able to go through a time where it seems like you don't know what is happening, but you have the truth of God in the midst of that storm. You have God's wisdom in the midst of that season. It's so awesome to know that God is with you, that God has already given you direction that whatever happens, you're going to make it. To know that that's a truth upon your life, that nothing could that no trap can attack you and destroy you, that no sickness can overcome you. It is so awesome to have that truth. It is your shield. Amen. Amen. And so the, the, the Spirit of God is speaking to us that we are covered by his with his feathers and under his wings we shall take refuge. It's a place of restoration. It's a place of rest. It's a place of protection. Praise the Lord. Verse 5. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day. I'm not going to be afraid of bombs if they were, if they were to happen to be headed my way. I'm not going to be afraid of, of things that might happen at night when I can't see. 
I'm not going to be afraid about the possibilities of something trying to hurt me or to destroy me or to attack me. I'm not going to be afraid by that. Amen. Tell your neighbor, we're not going to be afraid. Verse 6, nor the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor the destruction that lays waste at new day. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. It's not coming near me. Sickness and disease is not coming next to me. Ebola is not coming next to me. It's not coming near me. Destruction, bombs, terrorism, it's not coming near me. The enemy trying to, to destroy me, they can't come near me. Hallelujah. It shall not come near me. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. We might see it. We might hear about it. But it doesn't belong to you. It doesn't belong to you. So don't be moved by fear. Remember, you are not of this world. You are from heaven. You are a child of God. Remember that you are an ambassador of Christ. We're talking about people walking in the things of God, walking in the kingdom of God, recognizing who they are in Christ Jesus. Now, if you are not living for God, if you are not walking with the Lord, if you are not saved, you better get saved quickly. Because all those things that, that God says that he will protect you from, if you don't claim it, if you don't receive it, if you've never claimed your Savior, Jesus Christ, it does not belong to you. So you better get the guns, you better get the walls, you better get all those things. Amen. Because you're going to have to put your trust in something. But for us who are believers, how many believers are here today? We put our faith in the Lord. Amen. He is our Savior. He is our healer. He's our deliverer. Amen. Praise the Lord. Somebody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And so the Holy Spirit has spoken to us that that's not our reward. That doesn't belong to us. That is for others that are outside of the things of God. You know, we, we do not want anybody to go through those things, but that is the reward of the wicked. There is going to be a death. Amen. But thank God for our salvation in Jesus Christ. Amen. Verse 9, here Jesus begins to speak to us. He says, because you have made the Lord who is my refuge, even the most high your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. Hallelujah. You know, over and over it talks about plague. Over and over it talks about pestilence. Over and over it talks about disease. You know, Jesus has an answer for Ebola. Amen? Verse 11. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. How many thank God that you have angels? Do you know that there's more for you than against, than against you? There's more angels than there are devils? Hallelujah. I want to tell you, the angels of God are in this house right now. And the word of God says that because you love him, because you love God, God has put his angels in charge over you. They're protecting you. They're going with you. You walk in a place, the angels of God go before you, prepare the way for you. They begin to make sure that nothing there can hurt you. There's divine protection. Hallelujah. We have angels. Amen. The Bible says that these angels are ministering servants unto the heirs of righteousness. If you have Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are an heir of righteousness. And these angels are, are placed in charge. You, you won't even hurt your toe. Hallelujah. You won't even hurt your toe. Why? Because the angels are watching. They are, they are protecting. Hallelujah. Some people say, well, pastor, aren't you afraid about going those areas? No, I got angels. I've seen them in operation. I've seen them, I've seen it happen. I could tell you times where even devils try to attack and the angels stood up and knocked those things aside. Amen. amen. We have angels, amen. Don't you understand that those that are trying to destroy you are people that have been controlled by the devil? 
It's a spiritual force that has come and taken over their life. They've been possessed in their mind and their heart by the things of the devil. And this is a spiritual battle, not a physical battle. We think if we just destroy the body that we get rid of the problem. But that spirit goes from one to another. That spirit of anger goes from one to another. That spirit of fear goes from one to another. We need an angel to stand up and say, you ain't going nowhere else. You shall not come near here. Amen. This is a spiritual battle. We don't fight with guns and bombs and, 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 and military weapons. No, we fight with the authority and the anointing of the Holy Ghost, the authority of the name of Jesus Christ. Our weapons are more powerful than all the weapons of this war. Amen? Because our weapons of the glory of God can change that person completely and change their life and restore them. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 13 says, you shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent, you shall trample under foot. Here is a, protect, here is a, a promise of victory that no matter what you go through, even though it might be difficult, you will have victory. That whatever you're going through, whatever you are facing, whatever comes to attack your life, it shall be underneath your feet. You shall have victory in the name of Jesus. You shall tread upon. The only thing that you shall, that you shall see is your, is your boot marks on, on its back, on its head. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You will not be defeated. You shall walk over those things. You shall walk over the pestilence. You shall walk over the destruction at new day. You shall walk over the fear that's trying to destroy your life. You shall walk over. You shall walk in victory in Jesus' name. It didn't say maybe. Didn't say might, said surely. Surely. Hallelujah. I love that. I, I love that surely. Sure. You shall, you shall, you shall. Amen. Tell your neighbor, you shall have victory. And this is Jesus speaking to, to you. You shall have victory. You're going to walk over it. Amen. You might be facing a fight right now. You're going to walk over it. You're going to have victory in Jesus' name. See, what I love about victory is God gives you the power over that where it will no longer attack your life. Or even if it does attack your life, it shall never overtake your life. Because the weapons that God gives you are more powerful than whatever attack comes your way. He's faithful, amen? He's a good God. Hallelujah. And so we heard the voice of the, man, of the man of God. We heard the voice of the Holy Spirit. We heard the voice of Jesus. And all these things, they're saying, if you will just dwell in the secret place of the Most High God, all these things are yours. Divine protection. No fear. But then God says, your Heavenly Father wants to talk to you. How many want to hear the voice of their Father? So your father wants, next time, you, next time that, that, that news report pops up on, the, on your TV set and they, they, they start crying how the, the sky is falling, how everything in this world is, 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 it seems like all hell is breaking out. Remember, that's not for you. Remember what, 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 what Jesus said. Remember what the Holy Spirit, remember what, what the man of God said. Remember, but I want you also to remember what the father says. In verse 14, the Father is speaking to you. He says, because he has set his love upon me. He's talking to you. Because you set your love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. Tell your neighbor, God will deliver me. What else does he say? He says, I will set him on high. Because he has known my name, he shall call upon me, and I will answer him. Tell your neighbor, God will answer me. Isn't it awesome to know that whenever you call, God answers? Isn't it awesome to know that whenever you say, Father, he says, yes, my son. What will you have, what, what do you have to say to me? Talk to me. Whatever you ask, ask it. When you call, he will answer. You ain't going to get a voicemail. You're not going to get a, a text message an hour later. 
You, has, you have his divine attention right now. When you begin to call upon the name of the Lord, your heavenly father says, what will you ask of me? Amen. You have relationship. Amen? Because you know your God. Amen. Hallelujah. Verse 15. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. Hallelujah. What? That means when I am going through that trouble, I'm not alone. Amen. When I'm going through that hard time, I'm still not alone. Amen. You mean, you mean even when my, my family, my friends, they fail me and they run away, God is still with me. He will be with me in trouble. You know how awesome it, it was to know that when I was alone in that hotel in India, I knew I wasn't by myself. Well, praise the Lord, my friends. I love you guys so much, and I thank God for the opportunity to preach the gospel to you right here in the United States of America. But how many of you know that God's a big God, and He wants to touch the nations? The Lord has given us a direction. He has told us to go to the nations. In the month of October and November, I am leaving our church, and I'm leaving uh, the, my family for about 40 days, and we'll be visiting the nations of South Africa, Kenya, and Uganda. The, God has opened up doors for me to go and preach the gospel over there. We're going to lead the lost to Jesus. We're going to pray the healing power of Jesus Christ over those that are sick. And we are going to encourage the brethren. But I need your support and I need your help. I believe that God will provide for all our needs. But I believe that God always loves to use his, believe, his people to give to the missions that he has called us to do. So I want to encourage you. Will you support this missions trip? We are going the month of October and November. We need your finances now. We need your gifts right now so that we could pay for all the flights, for all the accommodations, for the meetings, whatever is needed so that we could preach the gospel to, to those nations. We're going to broadcast those, those, those services live over the internet so people even here in the United States could be a part of it. But I want to encourage you guys to give an offering for this missions trip. This is for the nations. This is not about you personally. This is about the kingdom of God. This is kingdom work. That's why we sacrifice. That's why we go for the kingdom of God. Amen. So I want to encourage you to give an offering. Give your offering today. Stop by the church and you can drop it off and tell us that this is for the African missions trip or go online to faithpleasesgod.com, faithpleasesgod.com and you'll see a button there where you could give online to support the missions work here, the missions work that we're getting ready to do in Africa. Amen. Let me pray a blessing over your life. Father, I thank you for speaking to your people. I thank you that you will meet all their needs and Lord, that you will give them more than enough so that they could give to your kingdom. Father, bless their house. And Father, I thank you for choosing us to go to preach the gospel to the nations. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I love you guys. Thank you guys for praying. Thank you guys for giving. We, we are expecting big things during the month of October and November. Thank you for your faithfulness. God bless, God bless you.